Hello folks, I'm Odin Spack, and welcome back to part 13 of 33 years and counting of my favorite games. Today we're going to be talking about 2010, and you'll have to forgive me because this is my first video doing these again since my little break from the previous set, so if you're watching these live you'll understand, if you're watching this in the future it doesn't matter, but I just want to get that out of the way so I can get back into the swing of things here. But uh, 2010, you know, the start of a new decade. Uh, what does the year have in store for games? Well, why don't we get into our, or my, <laughs> my honorable mentions first. Uh, starting with GoldenEye 007, the, the Wii, Wii make, <laughs> the, the remake, remaster. I guess not a remaster, it's a remake. Uh, I, I'm giving this an honorable mention. I played this game a ton when it came out. Uh Fans of the channel will know I'd made an entire series out of it called Golden Saturdays. Uh, it's kind of funny looking back at it. It wasn't like the greatest game ever, but it was a first-person shooter that, you know, it, it had GoldenEye in the name. It, it had, like, loose ties to the original game. Not much, really. It was more of Call of Duty than anything. It was more of a watered-down Call of Duty than anything. But uh, I had a lot of fun playing it. Shoutouts to my good pal Bubba, who we played uh, many games during it. I also played many games with other friends and fans uh, throughout that series. I just I had a ton of fun playing the multiplayer of this game. The campaign was okay. It wasn't anything to write home about. But uh, I had a lot of fun playing the multiplayer, even though it was insanely difficult to unlock new things in it as you leveled up the the requirements to get to a next level just got insane so props to anyone who legitimately got to uh level 56 the top level by the way in the game but uh, it was a lot of fun uh definitely a lot of memories this is more of a nostalgia like pick which is weird to say you know 2010 it doesn't feel that long ago but i guess you know it's 12 years ago now um, but uh, I still use the uh, the Wii Classic Controller uh, Pro that came with it, the gold one. I'm still using it today. It's a great controller. I love it. So that's one thing, one good thing to come out of it. Uh, another honorable mention is going to go to Mega Man 10. Yes, Mega Man 10 came out 2010, uh, not long after uh, Mega Man 9. This was like the uh, Wii revival of the series. Um, I, I loved Mega Man 9. 10 was just more of it. It felt even more difficult. Um, a lot of I think a lot of people say like 9 is harder than 10. I, I, I've never felt that way. 10, the bosses kind of seem insane to me uh, in that game. But I liked that you could also play as Proto Man. You didn't have to buy him like you did in, in 9. But you did have to buy base. I, I don't think I ever did that. Um... But I also enjoyed the inclusion of, like, an easy, normal, and hard mode uh, in the game, too. So, like, it was a good way, like, hey, I want, I'm want, i interested in Mega Man, but, you know, it's kind of really difficult. Well, you can put easy mode on, and you can put platforms over spikes and pits and stuff. So, you know, it has that in it, too. Uh, so I, I'm a big fan of uh, difficulty settings uh, when it comes to that. Uh, not to make it completely easy, but, you know, just to, for those who don't want to just... For those who aren't like me and are, like, purists where we have to play on, like, the original intended difficult settings, I completely get it, so I'm glad that that exists. This game has a great soundtrack. Um, it's one I need to replay again. It's been a while since I played it, but I just remember loving the Wii uh, Mega Man WiiWare games, um, so I, I'm going to give this one another shot again. Uh, and then my last honorable mention is going to go to <laughs> VVV, VVV, or it's also V6, or just V. Um, it's the game where you can, where every time you press the jump button, you don't jump, you just flip gravity up and down. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's no jumping in this game. You just switch your gravity up and down the whole time. Um, I first played this thanks to uh, my wife, uh, Madam Wario, who uh, recommended that I, I play this. Uh, we both had a recommendation for each other. I recommended she play Undertale. She was not as big of a fan as that, as I was of V6, um, which I'm going to be referring to as V6, just easier to say. Uh, 
what was really cool, I didn't I didn't know a lot about this game other than it had a absolutely banger soundtrack, which it I had only heard like a couple of songs in the game, and I was like, oh, the, these are the best songs of the game. And then I played the game, and then there were songs that I thought were even better than the ones I had heard before. Uh, like there's just like some amazing chip tunes in this game, like absolutely fantastic. Um, which is like one reason to play the game, one re one reason to revisit it. It's not a complicated game. Like I said, you just move and you press a button to switch gravity, and that's that's the whole control of the game. Uh, but there's puzzles and lots. Of, it's one of those like I want to be the guy instant death games uh, that were popular at the time. Uh, so it's it's the, it's like that. I don't think it's nearly as hard as I want to be the guy. Um, but it's it's of that nature. But it's not, like I said, it's not as crazy. Definitely a game that you, you, and it's like so quick to restart. Like every time you die, like it, you don't really start very far back. So it, it's, it's just like instant retry, like not even hard at all. Like as far as that's concerned, you can just keep trying over and over and over again. But uh, I had a lot of fun with it. And I, I tried saying this a minute ago. I didn't realize it was so inspired off of the uh, Commodore 64, which is a uh, computer I grew up with, which is possibly my first foray into gaming alongside the NES. And uh, when you boot up the game, it has like the startup screen for the Commodore 64. And it's very clearly meant to be like the game style is meant to be like, oh, it could have been made for this uh, for the Commodore. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, in terms of like it hit my my nostalgic bone right there uh just just with that so i was like okay that's that's what the vibe they were going for in this game uh so i really did appreciate that so great game loved it <laughs> i did a let's play of it it's on the channel it's a blind let's play um all right uh let's go into the uh the medals starting with bronze medal uh, for 2010. Now, this is a game I actually didn't play until this year, um, which is crazy, um, but it is my bronze medal, and that's going to go to Super Mario Galaxy 2. Now, I have I feel like I've mentioned a few times in this series that I'm not a big 3D platformer guy. However, Mario is the exception, where I just, just Mario just, just does it right. Uh, just whatever Mario's in, you know, nine times out of ten, he just does it right, and I mean, platforming obviously is Mario's like main gimmick. Uh, so Galaxy Two obviously is meant is meant to be an improvement on Galaxy One. Galaxy One is amazing, um, but it's been a long time since I've played through Galaxy One. But just after playing Galaxy Two, I just felt like everything that i that i loved about galaxy 1 they just they just made it better in galaxy 2 like it was just it was more of that but like it was just streamlined in just a better way i i love how the level select works in it uh Gal like i love the comet observatory from galaxy 1 but it it feels like it's like a watered down like peach's castle as far as the level select goes in that game like it's a really cool area to explore but then like you go to the one of the areas and it's just like a big level select whereas galaxy 2 is just like okay we're just going to give you one level select hub and you select from there and i mean that's like a minor part of the game um but i feel like there's more focus on the levels than there is like the hub world of the game starship mario is not really anything too impressive um, as far as exploring goes, I, I didn't think it was anything too crazy, but that's, that's what I was glad with the, the worlds, they didn't really like drag on too long. Like there was, I felt like there was just like a lot more levels in this game than there were in galaxy one. Um, and that was really fun. And, uh, also there was, there was some like throwback tracks that I didn't even know were in this game until this year. I, I couldn't believe like some of the songs that were like from super Mario world that were in this game. I didn't even realize um, so like that was interesting. I knew about Throwback Galaxy. I knew about that one. I feel like that's a pretty well known one in Galaxy Two, but I didn't realize there was like Mario World remixes in the game. So like that, you know, that that made me jump for joy because I like I said I was just like oh that's here cool. Um, but yeah, I I just feel like with the Comet Metal system just gives you know another collectible uh, to try and find the the green stars at the end maybe not like <laughs> the. The best thing, you know, you don't really need to do that. And the final challenge you get for it is not like, you know, anything like, 
like rewarding at all. I I don't think. I think you could probably just play through this game uh beginning to end and probably have the best experience with it, but I did 100% the game, which I can't say I did for Galaxy 1, which is weird cuz that's not as hard of a game to get everything in, but Galaxy 2 was a lot. Um but it was a lot of fun and I was felt really compelled to do so. Um so I, I think the entire streams were are archived on on Twitch, so you can check that out. I should probably put them up on YouTube. It was a lot of fun. So anyway, Galaxy Two. Uh, my silver uh, pick is good. My silver medal is going to go to Donkey Kong Country Returns, another project that I've done on this YouTube channel. Um, I've played through this game uh, several times now. Uh, because of that, I had to play through it twice. Uh, a little fun behind this, uh, behind the screens, behind the scenes fact. Uh, I, I had to record that project in uh, black and white <laughs> because uh, at the time my TV was busted. Uh, the uh, you know the uh, composite inputs, and I had to plug the yellow into the component green. Which when you do that, it makes it just black and white. It's not meant for that. Uh, but in order to record it, I had to do that. Uh, long story. I don't. I don't want to get into it too much. But I, I played through that project in black and white. I think almost entirely. I don't think it was the entire thing, but I think almost entirely in black and white. Uh, so that's <laughs> that's something. But um, this one I look fondly, more fi- fondly on than I do Tropical Freeze. And Tropical Freeze honestly might be the better of the two new Donkey Kong Country games of the Return series. Uh, But I just, I don't know, something about Returns just kind of, just kind of hits me better. I think it's more so because it was like a return to formula uh, that hadn't been seen yet, whereas Tropical Freeze kind of improved on that. Kind of like Blaster Master Zero One versus Two. Uh, Although I do end up liking Two more than One. Um, I think Returns just kind of... You know, I I really wanted to play another Donkey Kong Country game, and then once I played Returns and I loved it, and then I played Tropical Freeze, which mind you, I did play co-op. It just it didn't hit the same way. Um, now I it's not really me talking about Returns right now, but it, I I feel like that needs to be brought up because I feel like the comparisons definitely get made between Returns and Tropical Freeze a lot. Uh, so I did want to address that here. Um, but Returns like Returns kind of kind of like <laughs> you guys ever watch the uh, the E3, uh, Nintendo E3 press conference where they announced like this. And I think they announced GoldenEye at the same press conference. Um, and I think, I, I think, at, no, this is the year before. Because I, I, I brought this up uh, when I was talking about Kirby's Return to Dreamland last time. No, no, this is the, this was the year before. I just feel like the E3 where they brought all this stuff up was just like when I like really got into gaming. And the reason I'm saying that is because when I saw the trailer for Donkey Kong Country Returns, I I just remember like losing my mind. I was like, oh my god, I'm so excited, even though they really showed off like nothing. Like it was just more Donkey Kong Country. But at the time we hadn't seen that in so long. I was just I was so excited and I was felt I felt like compelled to love this game. And I, I did. I, I thought like it not only was it a great like return to the series at the beginning of the game, but it, it did become its own thing as you progress through it, and it got super challenging. All the uh, the K levels, like the bonus levels, were like insanely difficult, but like so worth it. Like it was like okay, we know that this game is challenging, but for those who want to go that extra step beyond, who want to be completionists and find everything, we got all these bonus levels for you, and then there's like a bonus at the end, like it. Like they they don't mess around. <laughs> there's there's a lot to do in this game, um, and it'll just always be a memorable experience for me. And and doing the let's play was an absolute blast. So there you go. The music is not like the best in the series. I will say, I will say they're like they're they're like remixes of the original songs, and some of them hit hit the mark. Some of them are are unique and are good. Uh, mostly the unique ones are the better songs in the game. The remixes aren't usually too great. Tropical Freeze did that better. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's move on to the gold medal game. Um, now, this one is like... 
I, it, it feels unfair to put this at my gold. I'm going to say right now, it's Perfect Dark, but it's the Xbox Live Arcade remake that came out in 2010. And it, it does feel unfair to put this here because, well, first off, Perfect Dark originally came out in, I think, 2000 or 2001. Um, and it's, like, my favorite first-person shooter of all time. So, like, it, it kind of has that edge going already, not only for the nostalgia factor, but just because, like, I played it so much growing up. But I really had to give the gold medal to this remaster because I think this is one of my favorite remasters, like, ever. Um, and I probably in part because I love Perfect Dark so much, but, man, the... Like, just the simple tweaks that are made to this remaster, it's like playing a whole new game. Um, there's no lag anymore. The game always flawlessly runs at 60 frames per second, which is, going from the N64 to that, is insane. I recently, as of a, like a day or two ago, uh, I repurchased GoldenEye 007 on N64. I hadn't played, for it, played it in a long time on the N64. And I was like, man... There's a ton of lag in this game. And now that's GoldenEye. Um, Perfect Dark had the use of the expansion pack, so there may not have been as much lag in that game because it had a little more processing power in it, but it also had like more to it, so it may have been along the same lines. Um, but I'm going to imagine that it was probably equally pretty bad. But like I said, just removing the lag and making it always 60 frames per second and just, you know, obviously 1080p, like, just that makes the game, like, a million times better. <laughs> like, I can't, like, I, I love, like I said, I loved the game growing up, uh, you know, like, it's just a really fun playthrough. Uh, I had never beaten it fully on the N64, but I, I, I did everything. I, I did everything on this Xbox Live arcade remake. I, I did all of the single player and co-op, like perfect agent. Like I did all of that. I did all of the challenges, um, which I, I think I did do on the N64, but I never had beaten all the solo uh, uh, missions on, on perfect agent before until this. And it, honestly, it was probably because of just the lag and stuff that existed in the original game. Um, I just think they just... Just by fixing that, like that's it. I mean, there's obviously graphical updates to it. You know, it looks nicer. You know, it's nine years later. They 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 remastered that. There's some other tweaks. There's online multiplayer, which is really cool. The, what's cool is the online co-op. Um, you could actually play it split screen, which is great for recording. <laughs> so you could play it split screen. Uh, you don't have to, but you can online. Um, and then there, there's the versus online. You can have up to eight people versus, which you could never do before uh, through the online feature. I don't know if you can through system link. Like, you know, how back in the day, people did that for, like, Halo. I don't know if you can do that for Perfect Dark. I want to say you can, but I, don't quote me on that. Um, so, like, that's really cool. And then the, uh, the GoldenEye weapons... Uh, that were in the game that you could only access in the single player mode uh, through cheats that you would unlock, they put them into the multiplayer mode. So, like, those guns are also in the multiplayer uh, for that. So, like, there's actually, like, new features in this, in this remaster that weren't in the original game. So I think that's really cool, too. And those guns are just, like, super busted, I feel like, compared... Like, with the Perfect Dark system, those guns are way too good <laughs> than, uh, than they ever were in GoldenEye. <laughs> like, it's not fair how good they are, because in... In Perfect Dark, like when like when you hit somebody, like their health just drains. In Goldeneye, you have like hit stun. There's like none of that in Perfect Dark. So like those guns are just way too good, <laughs> uh, which is maybe why they left them out of multiplayer in the first place. But they're like, ah, screw it, we're putting them in the multiplayer. I remember when that game. I remember when this came out. Um, I remember jumping on online against random people. I remember talking with them, having a blast. Like it, it was so much fun. Um, so, uh, like I said, I, I love Perfect Dark. You definitely have to play this. This is the way to play Perfect Dark, uh, in 2022. Uh, you can play it on Rare Replay, um, so that's, that would be the most modern way you could get your hands on it, so. All right, this was a longer one than usual. I'm really sorry. Uh, next time, 
Uh, we're going to be moving to the past decade with 2009. So until then, I've been Odin Spack. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.